Welcome back to the Prepare Like a Pro live chat Sunday show. My name is Jack McLean. I am your host. And on this episode, I'll update you on all things Prepare Like a Pro, such as our upcoming live chat, our upcoming episodes for the podcast, and all things in terms of our program, a live Q&A on Instagram, and a power tip which we'll wrap up with uh, to improve your uh, athleticism on field and improve ultimately your football performance because that's what we're all about here at Prepare Like a Pro. So let's get into it. Uh, Firstly, we'll start off with next week. We have our Tuesday episode, which will be with Will Hams. He's the co-founder of Luminal Wellbeing, and he's also played at the Essendon Football Club for a number of years, and I got to know him at the Box Hill Hawks, where he was a premiership player. And we discussed his journey as a footballer, both the good and the bad. He dealt with some injuries and, and setbacks, so we discussed how he managed those setbacks and um, also the excitement of, of things like draft day, uh, playing your first game and all the highs that come with being an AFL player. We then transition the second part of the podcast episode on his transition from AFL football to uh, being a co-founder of his business, Liminal Wellbeing, which is helping schools and football clubs with providing them uh, data uh, around wellness, so tracking your sleep, your motivation, and how the students and footballers are feeling. They just report that through, and then uh, the any red flags that need to be notified or communicated with are sent through to the teachers and coaches uh, specific to working in that program, so they're able to have a chat with that person and um, ultimately help them out uh, any way that they can by touching base or, or referring on to a expert. So He's doing some great things, and Liminal sounds like it's it's going to be a uh, awesome business and company that um, will be doing big things in 2022. They've just recently um, done a better testing, and they're about to launch the app. And, and by the time you listen to this, no doubt it'll be live. So if you're a footballer and you think it'll be good for your football club, or if you're at school, or potentially the teachers out there, and you think it's Uh, useful make sure to click the link in the show notes to find out more information our get better plan this week which we release a new episode every wednesday will be how to improve your recovery and performance with sleep so all things around sleep hygiene some things hopefully that you're already doing for the developing footballers out there but maybe some new things some new hacks that you can do to improve your sleep it's number one when it comes to recovery um, and preparing you for self, for performance and consistent performance. So getting into a quality sleep routine is the most important thing, um, particularly for those that are still growing. So for the parents listening out there, for their young kids that are playing a lot of sports and there's a lot of demand on the body and as well as the mind while they're learning, um, sleep is number one. So hopefully there's some helpful tips out there for young footballers to take on and start building some good habits. Our Thursday live chat, will be with Luke Meehan. He's worked in the AFL strength conditioning industry for up to over a decade now, starting at the Western Bulldogs as an assistant and uh, Geelong Football Club. And then now for the last few years, he's been a strength conditioning coach at the Richmond Football Club. So super excited to have Luke on. I had his partner, Emily, on, which was a great interview. And um, we're really looking forward to sharing Luke's journey as a strength and conditioning coach. He's worked three AFL clubs now, so he'll have plenty to share, no doubt, as well as what his uh, philosophy is when it comes to football strength and conditioning. So for all the athletes out there, make sure to tune in. That will be like all our live chats on our YouTube channel, Prepare Like a Pro. Make sure to click subscribe so you get the live updates. We post heaps of regular exercises as well as all our uh, podcast episodes. There's a six-minute highlights reel, for, so all the good bits condensed into a six-minute engaging video. You can watch that on our YouTube uh, playlist as the podcast playlist in the Prepare Like a Pro YouTube channel. So if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to check it out and tune into that live chat, 8.30 p.m. this Thursday. Friday, we'll have our first bite size um, from our nutrition for high-performance sport uh, first bite size uh, episode that will turn into a podcast which will be with Simone Austin where she was talking about the healthy food tracker and how you can use that for not only improving your 
uh, for the athletes out there, but also the family. So for parents to get involved and, and get quite competitive with the whole family and who's eating the best and, and how to improve your grocery shopping and the food that's stored in your house. So um, that will be released on Friday. And we also will have a another live collaborative event. I'm aiming to do this every month, so the last Thursday of each month. Our next one is going to be with facility owners, so those that own a high-performance facility in Australia, where that will be discussing, like we did with the nutrition one in January, it will be they'll discuss on a specific topic of their choice. I'll ask the questions and they'll uh, the experts will answer the questions as well as provide insights onto how their facility functions and for any athletes that might be living close by to their area, you might want to join their gym. So hopefully it builds some awareness because it's a growing space in Australia. Uh, it's something that America has been doing really, really well in the private sector and, and uh, we're gaining some good traction here in Australia. So looking forward to sharing all these great businesses and gyms um, with you all. Like always, if you have any questions for that event, they'll be on the 24th of February. So we've got a few weeks to start thinking of some questions. Make sure to send them through to us and we'll save them. And, and the, at the end of everyone's 10-minute bite-sized chat, um, talking about their gym and, and their philosophy and how they go about doing uh, helping athletes with their performance uh, in the private setting, we'll have a, a Q&A at the end. So that's where your questions can be answered. So really looking forward to that one. We will now stream over to our Instagram for a live Q&A to answer your questions. We've got three questions in this week, and no doubt there'll be a few that have, we'll send some in live. G'day, Instagram world. This week's Prepare Like a Pro live chat show, we have three questions sent in. So we do this every week for those new to our Instagram channel, 6 p.m., is our live podcast update where we talk all things at Prepare Like a Pro, who we're interviewing for the upcoming week, the upcoming podcast episodes that are going to be released on Tuesday and Friday, as well as answer all your questions that have been sent through. So we're going to get straight into the Q&A for those tuning in live. G'day, Alex. Yo, yo. Feel free to send in your questions, guys, by hitting the question button at the bottom of your screen. First question was sent via email, and that was Barry. He wrote, "How uh, I've had three hamstring strains. What should I do to prevent having another this season? Uh, sorry to hear about your three hamstring strains, Barry. Uh, without um, working with your physio and, and seeing you, it is incredibly hard to give advice for you to follow. But number one, uh, make sure you've got a good support team behind you. So seeing a physio and getting um, support from a medical front is really, really important. And they will look after a lot of the early stage rehabilitation, working closely with the strength and conditioning coach, of course. And then as you progress through your milestones in rehabilitation and you're getting closer to the football, then that's when we will start, that strength and conditioning coach will start to take over more of the return to play um, process for you and, and giving you benchmarks to, to hit before going into the main group. Uh, but to keep it really simple for you, Barry, hamstrings, we want to make sure that we're, We've got um, good length through our hamstrings, so doing some eccentric strength exercise. The research uh, is strong on that improving your fascicle length uh, and your deceleration ability, so making sure that you're really strong through your hamstrings, things like RDLs, single leg RDLs, remaining delves with a barbell, load that up and really focus on length, so stretching the hamstrings, uh, minimal bend through the knees, so you're loading up more the proximal hammy, which is the top part of the hammy towards your hips. And then we want to have some knee-based eccentric exercises in there as well, um, where we'll focus on uh, things like Nordics and and bridges exercises and sliders, where you basically foots on a on a slider, or or you can have wear wear your socks at home and do it on your tiles, and you just slowly lengthen out your leg. If you don't, if those exercises or my demonstrations um, don't make sense, just head over to our YouTube channel. We've got injury prevention uh, playlist where you can check out these exercises uh, that I've mentioned but they would be the made ones Barry and then making sure you're getting regular exposure to high speed uh, running so you are fit and you can mitigate the risk of, of fatigue because football is a long game we've got four quarters 
of lots of high intensity efforts, making sure that you're fit is really, really important in preventing hamstring strain. And then of course, exposure to sprinting. So what we know with sprinting is it needs to be above 90% of your max velocity. So if you know you can sprint, if you're wearing a GPS unit and your fastest speed is nine meters per second, let's say, then getting exposure on a weekly basis of eight meters per second and above is really important. As well as the research is strong on 95% of max velocity because we will recruit more of your hamstrings the faster you move. So hamstrings are our speed muscle. So making sure we're getting regular exposure to high speed efforts is, is really important. So if you can get strong in the gym, particularly eccentrically with lengthening your hamstrings, both with the hip-based stuff, so RDLs and the knee-based stuff like uh, the Nordic, and you can improve your uh, fitness. So making sure that you're super fit to resilient to fatigue and then regular exposure to sprinting. That'd be the big ticket items, Barry, to hopefully um, not have another hamstring strain, mate. Three is not a lot of fun. So hopefully that helps. If you have any more questions, remember the importance of a support team, so a good physio and s &C to help you with those milestones and getting you uh, in good shape for this season. Heath has sent in the next question, and then I've, I've seen a couple of uh, Instagram live ones have come through as well. So I'll get to those, Jack Lawrence and Seb, um, shortly. And if you've got any questions for those tuned in, send through via the question button at the bottom of your screen. Keith's question is, my bench press won't go up in the last three months. What should I do? I want to hit a 1.5 times body weight bench press. Uh, plateaus are completely normal, particularly the longer you train, the more you'll have plateaus. So sometimes you just need to stick at it and um, and the you'll bounce out of it. So just keep up the consistency that, that pays dividends and then eventually you'll you'll break out of that plateau by just sticking to the program. Sometimes you do need to shake it up a little bit. So maybe you've just been bench pressing for too long or you've been following the same five by five or same type of program for a long time and you're mentally just disengaged with it. So we need to find ways to um, keep the training program fresh. So maybe you need to do some band training, um, some dumbbells, incline bench press, decline bench press, floor press. So just changing the stimulus from a mental point of view can be really, really effective to just um, improve your intent when you're in the gym. So you're lifting with, with max effort. And obviously with that intensity over time should start to, with that progressive overload, you should start to break that plateau. So check in with yourself mentally. Are you bored of the program? Shake it up a little bit. Um, or do you just really need to just sit, sit this through and it's just a natural plateau, which will happen the longer you train, the more you'll have these. So stick to the program and keep rocking up, bringing your effort and it will come. So that would be my main advice with you, Keith. Um, and hopefully that helps. Sophie has written in the next one and then I'll get to the Instagram questions. How can I improve my acceleration on feel? This was sent through via email. Great question, Sophie. Acceleration, make sure you're practicing it. So I would recommend doing some run mechanic drills uh, to improve your efficiency and how well you're working with your arms and your legs. A lot of the times we do run drills and footballers will have they'll lead with the same arm and the same leg. So you can improve um, by 10% of your acceleration ability by just getting your arms and your, and your legs working as one unit. So we want we want opposites. So when my left knee is driving up, my right arm is driving up, and that, that way we're using the whole body. Um, the hips and knee and shoulders are connected uh, crossover, so that's why that's so important part of the reason. So we get that sling momentum by using our opposite arm with opposite leg. So... Practicing coordination of run drills, start slow with just marching drills, then do a skip and then do it into high speed. Um, so you're practicing real thing. Power bands are really, really good. So strapping a power round around your hips so you get that good 45 degree angle that we want when we're generating force into the ground. So that can be another way to improve your acceleration by strapping a, a power band around your hips and have a partner hold behind or just strap it to uh, a fence and work your drills against the power band so you're getting some extra resistance. And the third one would be potentially improving your mobility of hip extension and dorsiflexion. So hip extension thinking, well, wow, back lift so we can get um, a good stretch through uh, the hamstrings and the hips as well as a good knee lift, so hip flexion being on knee lift so we can generate good force into, into the ground. And... Um, and dorsiflexion where our knees can go well over our two toes with our heels staying flat on the ground so you're able to access 
the power out of your ankle complex. Um, so those two areas would be really, really important. If you're really tight through your ankles uh, and your hips, a good test for that is can you squat hips below your knees? If you can't, then improving your hip mobility and your ankle mobility um, may be something you need to focus on to improve your acceleration. So they're the three areas, running mechanics and practicing coordinating arms and legs, your um, your power band stuff and doing making sure you're doing high intensity on the field with power bands and and, bring, and practicing acceleration at high intensity and then mobility, improving your ankle and hip mobility. Okay, now going to the questions from Instagram. First one's from Jack Lawrence. What exercises can I do to become more explosive because that's an area of my game I'm trying to improve? Uh, plyometrics would be really, really good. So that's uh, jumping base movements. They're really good for improving your explosiveness. Um, Olympic lifting, if you if you have a coach that can teach you, can be a great way to improve your explosiveness. So power clean or hang power clean. Uh, even a, a power shrug can be a good way to move the bar. But for explosive training to improve your power, the research just we want to move at about one meters per second. So like recently we had Jacob Tober with his app Metric using your phone you can track the velocity of the bar bell and how fast it's moving. And if it's moving slower than one meters per second, let's say you're moving at 0 0.6 meters per second, then we need to lighten the weight or you need to bring bigger intent, bigger intensity to move that bar faster to make sure that the weight on the bar is allowing you to move at a fast pace to get the stimulus we want to improve your explosiveness. So having some measurables and being able to quantify your training can help. And, um, from exercise selection point of view, like I mentioned, plyometrics, so jump training, Olympic lifting uh, are the best two ways that you can improve your power in the gym. And then on the field, making sure you're accelerating, like I talked before with Sophie's question, and sprinting on a weekly basis. Next question from Seb. I just got COVID and feel fine. Can I go running on treadmill? We're recommending our players um, following a similar protocol to like the concussion protocol, which we've put in place. And that is where they are resting um, to be able to allow their body to respond and fight the uh, illness. So I wouldn't recommend pushing yourself too hard and running on a treadmill. If you have COVID, let your body uh, fight the illness uh, and get over the virus as soon as possible so then you can integrate back into your training whereas if you push yourself too hard that you're going to add another stress and that's going to potentially affect your ability to and your immune system to to fight COVID-19 so my recommendation said would be to keep your sessions and your intensity at a feel-good pace if you are symptom-free like you mentioned um, where you're not pushing yourself too hard so you can help your body um, recover and get and uh, so you're, you're back into full training after the seven-day isolation. And that looks to be it, Seb, Jack. Thank you for your questions. That's it, guys. We're going to move to our power tip now for this week which will be how you can get an edge from a recovery perspective on your opponents by having a get better plan with your recovery. So if you're a developing athlete and you want to be the best footballer you can be, you want to look at what you're doing in your current schedule and how can you get an edge on your opponents that you, and also on yourself that you can improve on that potentially you weren't doing in the past. So what are some areas you can improve on? And one that I see all the time is recovery only focusing on how you can f have your muscles feel better or your energy, your body fatigue not being as low going into the next session. So things like going to the beach, pool, ice bath, these things. And all those these things are really important, like massage and your, fo and your intent is in the right place and your attitude is great. And you're trying to improve your recovery to help your um, physical state going into the next session. What I want you to start adding to that routine is about five to ten minutes of improving your mobility with your recovery sessions so that way you're actually improving your athleticism over time you're not just focusing on the now but you're actually putting some time and energy into your future self which is going to pay dividends later on in your career and that's how we want to think about with the get better plan is you're going to be playing football for a long time with this approach so how can we maximize the time that we're putting into our body and recovery sessions is one area that i think you can move the needle by 
focusing on not just passive recovery like massage and and an ice bath but actually moving and rolling your sleeves up and getting to work so start with doing some dedicated mobility drills around your hips and your your thoracic spine your upper back they're two really big bang for buck areas that you can improve and you should see benefits from for your um, next session but also over time after you're in this habit of doing some dedicated mobility work every time you do a recovery session over weeks months years you're going to be a more mobile athlete which is going to allow you to have more options on the field um, and also from a that's from a performance perspective but also you'll be able to um, prevent your risk of potential injury as well so That's this week's power tip. When you do a recovery session, also think of what areas can you mobilize your body to improve your long-term mobility. We have a new and exciting option on our website page. So if you search for preparelikeapro slash podcast.com, you can send us a voice message. So to do this, just head to the website and click to the podcast page and you can click record and send up to 90 second voice message and then you'll be Uh, making a guest appearance on our next podcast and I'll do my best to answer your questions. So for those interested, head over to our website and send us through a voice message. That should be a nice, fun way to integrate into our live weekly updates, not just sending in emails and and direct messages, but actually you can send a voicemail message in now. This week's review is from Lachlan M1011. Great listen and good insight to what is required to compete with the very best. Thank you so much, Lachlan, for the review. This allows our podcast to reach more people and ultimately help more people like yourself, Lachlan. So I really appreciate it. And if you're listening to this podcast, it'd be amazing if you could um, send us in a review. You can do that now on Spotify. You can rate as well as like Lachlan did. You can do it on the iTunes uh, podcast as well. So I really appreciate it, Lachlan. Thanks, mate. And for anyone listening in, if you could give us a quick review, that would be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Remember, we have our Thursday live interview with Luke Meehan. That will be at 8.30 p.m. on the YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed already, check out our YouTube channel. We've got plenty of playlists with exercises and educational content we post every week. I'll see you guys then.